So my sister got this bike for free. It was from some competition or what, so the quality was quite bad. When I first repaired it, we decided to paint it. So the acetone was born. After a while, pedals fell off. So I have done some calculations to figure out what motor would I need to convert this bike to e-bike. As high-powered DC motors are quite expensive, I thought about making my own. Motor was mounted on these bars that I welded to the frame. Unfortunately, it burned during test ride and I don't have all of its parts. Here's the wooden pulley for V-belt. It seems that it didn't survive these harsh conditions. Motor shell and the pulley was made of hardwood. This is probably the reason why the motor has burned. Power was supplied by car battery mounted on steering. Through these wires 20 amp of current was transmitted. There are three 2mm diameter copper wires. There was also no speed controller or anything. Switching was done literally by contacting two wires by hand. Sometimes the contact wasn't very good and you burn your hand. There was also amp meter mounted on the steering so I can see the power of motor. This motor was meant to run at 500 watts at maximum, but the test ride was at 250 watts during high load and about 100 watts at leveled terrain. Test ride was done obviously at night outside of civilization. Now in this video we are not going to end with nice usable product, but I will rather show you how it worked. So you will need fan. These fans are controlled by hole sensor and we are going to use it for our motor. Get the cheapest you can get. Fans with two wires are better because those with yellow wire does usually have failsafe feature that if you have low RPM for more than two seconds it will stop for two seconds or so. Best hole sensor is with two outputs, however these are most common. If you get sensor with one output, you will have to negate it. Outputs of these sensors are most commonly open collector. So liberate the PCB and get rid of the coil. Here you can see that this fan has also its own driver. However, we will not need it. It will be replaced with this. This is MOSFET H-bridge driver that is capable of delivering about 100 amps. This one was used on the bike itself. It has built-in pull-ups and bootstrap circuit. And we will also replace this coil with this one. This is some other driver, but important thing is that LED thingy. It is Poorsman oscilloscope. Basically, it's used for debugging or monitoring this circuit. I will use it for quick demonstration of how these whole sensors work. Well, for example, this one does not work at all. Okay, let me grab another one. Nice, this one looks dumb enough. And now we can be sure that the fun works also. So this sensor switches according to magnetic polarity. If I turn the magnet around, the corresponding LED will light up. This is how fast is it switching in operation with fan. Ok, so let's check if the driver is still working. So these two wires are connecting to the whole sensor. If one of them is floating, the LED will light up. If both of them are floating, these MOSFETs will blow up. But I am using limited current power supply. So let me connect the sensor to my driver. So far so good. And last thing to do is to connect this coil. 
where our LED tester is. I have a lot of these red and blue LEDs because in past I was developing some specialized lamps. So my first attempt was to use them as an encoder with this disc. This requires a lot of analog electronics and it is prone to failures anyway, but this is also possible. After then this idea with hole sensor came to my mind. And I'm using fans because they are cheaper than hole sensors themselves and I can get them at any time locally. These two discs are from motor, mounted on bike. They were mounted on some spacer with magnets facing inside and there was a coil array. Every second coil was wired in parallel. I'm going to reproduce this motor function with extremely simplified construction. Now I'm drilling 26mm hole for bearing. I was using ball bearings, but now I would consider using plastic bushings. This is mainly because of noise and also I didn't use proper shaft, so the bearings have suffered quite a lot. By the way, this bearing is from original motors, so you can hear that they are quite noisy. Well, right now I don't have smaller screws, so I am using this threaded rod. Now I will mount the motor plate. These discs are laser cut and they are quite well balanced. Now let's place magnets on rotor. Every second magnet has to have the same polarity on top, so the pattern is SN, 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 SN. Okay. In the original motor there was plastic piece that has holes for magnets. That allowed me for precise placement and also prevented movement because of high inertia forces. Ok, so the rotor is rotating, sensor is sensing and the driver is driving. Now I have to mount sensor somehow and connect the coil. I will use tape to stick sensor in place and hopefully it should not move very much. Ok, so coil is now connected and you can see the LED is blinking and this is because of overcurrent protection of my power source. This motor will draw a load of amps during startup, so I will have to add a resistor to limit the current. As a resistor I will use the wire from guitar strings. This wire has a very low resistance, but it will help. This motor can also be used as a generator. In fact, there is more resource on this type of generators than motors, at least on YouTube. Original motor has quite good dynamic parameters and beautiful faint sound of traction motor. I want to do one more video about this motor. I want to test one type of coil that I saw somewhere on YouTube, but I can't remember where it was. I don't even know if this type of coil has any name. I will call it perhaps multipole single coil. Also I want to do magnetic analysis of this type of motors and some design or maybe more types of design in CAD. I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of room for improvements. So if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment. And I'm quite excited about future episodes because I really want to see what I really want to see how that coil will perform. But until then, thanks for watching and have a nice day.